Today, you'll learn how to prevent arterial plaque with foods and supplements. I have good news for you. Arterial plaque is reversible. And no, there's no need for medication or elaborate protocols. You can do it all by yourself and simpler than you think. Hi, I'm Dorothy Adamiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books and the creator of Using Proportions Blueprints so you can finally get an A in health. How to prevent arterial plaque and how to stop already existing plaque buildup is the topic of this video. For binge watching, please click through to my blood pressure playlist. Enjoy! Despite what you've been told, arterial plaque does not show up because of advancing age or because of heredity. Arterial plaque follows specific lifestyles. And that's good news, because you can have a full control over it. Let me first tell you how to prevent arterial plaque by lowering cholesterol. Uh, actually, no, that's not how things work, because lowering cholesterol won't do a thing. You may recall from my previous videos that to form a plaque, cholesterol has to go through a process called oxidation. Let me stress it again. The first step in plaque formation is not high cholesterol, but high oxidized cholesterol. Only the latter forms a fatty streak and blocks the arteries. Do not ever confuse cholesterol with oxidized cholesterol. The first one is good, really good. The other one is not. Cholesterol and oxidized cholesterols are two different things. And no, your lab report will not tell you which one you have. The lab report only tells you the number of cholesterol particles but it does not distinguish between cholesterol and oxidized cholesterol. In plain language, it means your cholesterol number is useless for estimating arterial plaque buildup. So if your lab report comes back with high cholesterol, don't panic. You can prevent arterial plaque buildup not by lowering cholesterol, but by preventing cholesterol oxidation. If you understand this, you will also understand the following. You may have high cholesterol, but squeaky clean arteries, and you might have low cholesterol, yet a complete arterial blockage. Oxidation is a reaction between, obviously, oxygen and another molecule, such as cholesterol. When cholesterol reacts with oxygen, you end up with oxidized cholesterol, the very catalyst of arterial plaque. You don't want arterial plaque, so it may have occurred to you that you could stop this reaction by completely eliminating either cholesterol or oxygen from the equation. But that's not realistic. Both cholesterol and oxygen are essential to life. You can't live without them. So, for real, how can you prevent arterial plaque if cholesterol is good, oxygen is good, but oxidized cholesterol is not? Is it even possible? It is. Oxidative reactions are a normal part of physiology, so you can't eliminate them. But don't panic. Your job is not to eliminate all oxidative processes, but to prevent damages from oxidative excess. There are two ways to prevent oxidative damage to the arteries. One, by maximizing on cardiac antioxidants, and two, by preventing oxidative stress before it starts. This video focuses on antioxidants. How can you stop oxidative stress before it happens is the topic of another video. Please subscribe if you want to become an expert on how to prevent arterial plaque. Let's dive into antioxidants. But before you reach for magic pills or superfoods, you need to know whether oxidative processes actually got out of hand and whether you need any antioxidants at all. So do you have antioxidant insufficiency? Well, there is a rather simple way of getting a rough picture about your antioxidant status. It's by measuring your pH. pH is a measure of acidity and alkalinity. It's not a direct measure of antioxidants, but you can use it as a rough indicator. When do you need more antioxidants? When you have low pH. Check your first morning urine and see what's going on in the body. 
This is how it works. If you are low in antioxidants, your body will be more acidic and these acids will need to be disposed of. One way the body does it is by acidifying the urine. By checking pH of your morning pee, you can get a good idea whether oxidative processes are excessive and whether you should balance them with antioxidants. The test is simple. When you get up in the morning, pee in an empty cup and use either pH paper or a probe for testing. Ideally, you want to see 6.4, maybe 6.6 .6 on the pH scale. If pH is higher than 7, do not add any antioxidants. You don't need them. If pH is lower than 6.3, you may consider adding antioxidants to balance your biochemistry. The rule is this. The lower the pH number, the more antioxidants you might want to add. Most people with heart problems do not have alkaline urine. And you may discover this by yourself when you do the test. Most heart problems contribute to acidity. If you are one of those people whose pee is acidic, you may want to stock up on antioxidants. But which ones? My absolute favorite is vitamin C. Vitamin C is the key antioxidants for prevention of heart disease. Did you know that vitamin C can dramatically reduce oxidative stress, including cholesterol oxidation? You may remember something about LDL from my previous video. The more oxidized LDL, the higher the likelihood of arterial blockage. It is in your interest to have as little oxidized LDL particles as possible. Vitamin C can do exactly that. It can stop LDL oxidation. In other words, it can prevent arterial plaque buildup. But there is more to it. Vitamin C not only stops oxidation of LDL, it also stops oxidation of HDL. Why this is important? Because HDL is necessary for arterial plaque reversal. If you have oxidized HDL, your chances of plaque reduction is low. So how much vitamin C should you take? Well, you may want to start with 500 milligrams. Uh, don't take more unless you're sure you need it. How can you tell if you do? Check your pee. If it turns out that you need more antioxidants, you can always add another pill, provided that it's safe for you. Ask your doctor if you're not sure. Even better, you can get vitamin C test strips and test yourself. This way, you'll know for sure whether you should continue with vitamin C or you'll be better off switching to another antioxidant. If your vitamin C levels are low, continue with 500 milligrams increments. One sign that you are taking too much is appearance of loose stools. If you get there, cut back. But even though I adore vitamin C supplements, I still think it's far better to use foods than get dependent on pills. There are two main reasons why. One, bioavailability. Foods have far higher bioavailability. For example, vitamin C absorption rate is enhanced by other nutrients present in the food. Such is the case with bioflavonoids. Safety. Foods offer better nutrient balancing. Smaller quantities present in food won't lead to overdose, organ damage, or cause nutrient imbalances. If you decide to make your food your medicine, here's a cheat sheet with the richest food sources of vitamin C. Acerola cherries, rose hips, peppers, guavas, black currants, kiwis, lemons, papayas, strawberries, and oranges. These are all plants. But even though vitamin C is high in plants, don't go plant-based. What, what? Okay, let's talk about coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 is one of those key antioxidants for the heart. CoQ10 prevents cholesterol oxidation, improves heart function, and contributes to vasodilation. CoQ10 can stop and prevent arterial plaque. Fatigue and muscle weakness may be the first signs of CoQ10 deficiency. Watch out for those little subtle signs of ill health. Muscle fatigue may include heart fatigue. Heart is a muscle. And a prolonged CoQ10 deficiency may not only lead to physical and mental fatigue, but it can also lead to heart pathology. You can get coenzyme Q10 in pills, but as I suggested earlier, 
food should become your primary source of antioxidants. So which food should you eat? Organ meats. Organ meats such as liver, kidneys and heart are loaded with coenzyme Q10. For example, 100 grams of beef heart has over 11 milligrams of coenzyme Q10. That's quite a bit. In contrast, broccoli, one of the richest plant sources of the antioxidant, is seriously lagged behind. Have a look. There is less than one milligram of coenzyme Q10 in 100 grams of broccoli. If you do your math, you can clearly see that it's impossible to eat broccoli to get 11 milligrams of this antioxidant. Can you eat 21 cups? That's what you need to do to get CoQ10 equivalent of four ounces of beef heart. The bottom line is animal organs are extremely nutrient dense with beef hearts and chicken livers being the richest sources of coenzyme Q10. Great, but what do you do with those hearts and livers? Here's a 10 second instruction. By frozen, cook in butter, real butter, not butter substitutions or oils. Add salt and maybe some onion and garlic. That's it. This is super nutrition. Please include it in your diet regularly. And while at it, have a glass of wine. Seriously? How do you prevent arterial plaque by drinking wine? For that, you have to get to know resveratrol. Studies show that resveratrol is not only cardioprotective, neuroprotective, and anti-inflammatory, but it can also inhibit all stages of carcinogenesis. Fantastic! Can resveratrol also prevent arterial plaque? You bet! Resveratrol prevents cholesterol oxidation, as, as you know, that prevents arterial plaque. Besides, resveratrol boosts activity of other antioxidants. These are also cardioprotective. So where can you find resveratrol? In grapes. Dried grape skin is the highest source of resveratrol known to us. So if you have any heart trouble, make sure that grapes or grape products like wine are on your table. Look at the studies. Moderate wine drinkers have about 30% fewer cardiovascular problems than those who don't drink at all. But not all wines are made equal. While red wines are a rich source of resveratrol, white wines are not. It's because red wines are extracted with grape skin intact, while white wines are from grapes fermented without the skin. So forget about white wines. Your heart needs the red, but only in moderation because quantity makes a big difference. Apparently, moderate drinkers have the cleanest arteries, but moderate drinking doesn't mean two bottles per meal. It means one to six glasses of wine per week. I'm stressing per week, not per day. For real? But if six glasses reduce arterial plaque, wouldn't 10 or 20 completely eliminate it? Nope, it doesn't work like that. And here's why. You may be surprised to learn that depending on the quantities, antioxidants can behave like pro-oxidants. So while a small quantity of vitamin C or resveratrol can help prevent arterial plaque, a large quantity, instead of protecting you, it can actually contribute to oxidative damage. Let me rephrase it, because it's important. If you take too many antioxidants, you can actually contribute to plaque formation. This is one of the reasons why you should be very careful with pills and let food be your medicine. However, this does not mean you won't need pills at the beginning. You may need them to speed up your regenerative processes. If you do, do it only short term. Getting stuck on multiple meds or multiple supplements for months or worse for years isn't the healthiest. How do you prevent arterial plaque buildup without getting stuck with a pile of pills is a topic for another video. Please subscribe and until then.